Hi, it's Lorraine from PregnancyExercise.co.nz and this is our two-part video series to go with our blog Does Your Diastasis Have to Close? So this is the first of two videos in this blog. So what I'm going to do today, even though we've done videos before on how to test your diastasis, I just want to do a quick one to show you a guide on, on how to test your separation post-birth. Okay, now it's best to test your separation any time from two to six weeks post um, the birth of your baby because this is when you tend to get a more accurate result. Prior to that, your uterus is still shrinking down, there's increased um, extra pregnancy fluid which is still there and there may also be some abdominal discomfort. Okay, so after that period of time, you can test your diastasis. So lying down on your back, legs bent. And what I want you to do first is it's quite good to have a t-shirt um, over you because it tends to just feel easier to be able to press down into your stomach muscles to actually feel the separation. It can be easier. I often find that. But I like to test both with my clients. So I like, to, first of all, I like to have a look at the stomach muscle and see what the stomach looks like, okay? So you can have a feel of your abdominal muscles whilst you're relaxed on your back to get a feel of how they're feeling and to see if you can actually feel any gap whilst you're relaxed in this position. Okay, so now keeping your head, neck and shoulders relaxed, all you're gonna do is slightly lift up your head. It's not a crunch. We don't want you to engage that abdominal, the rectus abdominal muscles, okay? So just nice and relaxed, and you might need to come back into this position as you're testing. Okay, so just lift your head up, start at the top of the linear elbow, which is here, and then I want you to work down very slowly, right down, seeing if you can feel a start of a gap. Now what tends to happen is, here at the top, you may hopefully feel that there's some nice tight connective tissue, and we're going to go over this in the next video. Okay, and then if you feel it start to drop down, that's generally where the start of your diastasis will begin. So you want to measure where it starts from and where you can feel the gap end. Then I want you to come back, you might need to rest your head again and see what the gap is like through the widest part of your abdominal muscle. So again, twist and turn your fingers around, have a little play, relaxing your head, lifting back up, to see if you can feel an accurate gap through the stomach muscles. Now, don't be concerned if this gap is quite wide. Post the birth of your baby, that's perfectly normal, and remember, we can correct it. Okay, so you've now got two measurements. You've got the vertical and you've got the width. Now, what I want you to test is the depth. So I want you to see where the depth is at the deepest part. Okay, now, Again, this will vary. The depth can be anything from really minimal depth up to around about past your knuckle, okay? So that's the third measurement. And then the last measurement, I want you to feel what that connective tissue within your separation feels like, okay? And that's the difference in the grade of how quickly you're going to recover post child for your diastasis and how quickly your diastasis will heal okay and how long the recovery process will be so that last test which is the test of your connective tissue okay to see how thin it is is a really good guide of where you need to be to test your progression okay so that's video one the next video that follows on from this, we're going to go into a little bit more on that connective tissue and how the connective tissue should feel. Hi, it's Lorraine from PregnancyExercise.co.nz and this is part two in our video series for our blog, Does Your Diastasis Have to Close Post Childbirth? for optimal function of your core and muscular system. So in this blog, we're gonna have a look at the connective tissue and what it feels like in the gap, what it should feel like when it's healed and how it's healing, how long it will possibly take, and this is just to give you a good guide of when you can be classed as healed 
now that your diastasis may not close. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm going to lie down on my back first and we're going to have a look at the connective tissue. So, your connective tissue strength. This is really important to, to test how your diastasis, test how the connective tissue feels in your diastasis. That's your separation. So what we want it to feel like is nice and strong, quite bouncy, and we can't, there's a lot of tension there. Okay, so this, when you crunch up, or lift your head up, as if we were to test for diastasis, the, re the linear alba should feel nice and strong all the way down. Okay, so the consistency of the connective tissue of your linear alba, which stretches through your pregnancy, stays the same. Now, in the gap, it'll probably start to thin out and feel very different when it's quite soft and being stretched. Now, a good guide that I like to use is, if you can imagine, do you remember, do you know the state test of how to test your state, whether it's blue, easy, medium to well done? Well, it's very similar for your connective tissue in your abdominal muscles, and this is what I like to use. So, with your hand, okay, the connective tissue, when it's very, very weak and lengthened, can feel like this part of your hand, okay? So, this part here, once we start to build the connective tissue and the tissue gets stronger, it starts to become well done like your straight so steak. So this tension is very, very strong and thick compared to coming down where you've got very, very thin tissue. So it's the thin tissue which we need to be aware of because that tends to take longer to heal because we need to build more connective tissue to thicken and to increase that tension of the connective tissue. So what we'll do, we'll go back down. So when you're testing, again, nice and thick connective tissue. Now, if you were to connect with your pelvic floors and engage your transverse abdominals as you exhale and as we teach through our programs, so let's take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, lift up your pelvic floor muscles, draw in your transverse abdominals, and I'm just going to do a crunch for you. The tension in the connective tissue should stay the same all the way down. Now, for those of you who are frustratingly trying to close a gap, you may have been trained to close it for several months now and you've still got a small gap, then might, that just might be a slight widening, but if the connective tissue is nice and strong, even with a slight widening, you may actually be healed. So your diastasis can be classed as healed. Okay, so some women can perfectly close their gaps together, but some women may not, but they'll still have good function. And that's what's really important. So we need to make sure that connective tissue is nice and strong and thick and spongy right down through the linear alba. Remember, we want to feel it, make it feel like that well done, thick piece of steak. And then I also want to, for you to ask yourself the several questions that are in this blog for where you're at. If you found your balance, if you've got good function. So we need to make sure that you're not leaking, you've got no back pain, your posture has completely changed. So, and there's several other issues that we need to look at that might suggest that your diastasis is actually healed and you can move forward onto a more strenuous exercise program, meaning that you can go back into the gym and you don't have to miss out certain exercises in the classes. It's all about having good control of your transverse abdominal muscles with your pelvic floor muscles and your core system. Okay, so that's what we need to look at to check to see on your function of your abdominal muscles. I hope you enjoyed that. Please make sure you read the whole blog on pregnancyexercise.co.nz and visit our site for online pre and postnatal exercise and wellness programs.